should be live. Let me, for some reason, my mic. Give me one second, family. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. So we live, we live, we live. Family in the chat. <clears throat> Have a good show. About to bring on my guest in a second. I want y'all to hit that like button. It's real important to hit the like button so people could dis discover the show while it's live. Um, let me get to a quick commercial. Tell your friends and family we live. We talking about some ancient history today, y'all. We are talking about some ancient history today, like you have never heard before. So uh, we'll be right back in about 30 seconds, family. All right. All right. Without further ado, I want to welcome back to the platform. My brother, none other than Rod Hayes, man. Welcome back, Rod. Peace to the guy. What's going on, brother Rich? <laughs> Hey, hey, man, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. I'm glad to have this show uh, tonight. Um, I titled it The Pre... Is Adamite the right word? That's how you say it? The right... It, it, yeah. I, titled, I titled it The Pre-Adamite World. And um, it's a hot discussion on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube about life before this story of Adam and Eve. Um yeah, we're discovering who we really are, Rod. It's that time we're discovering a lot about ourselves, and it's helping us understand ourselves, enabling us to uh, tap into who we really are and now who we believed we were. Uh, to start out with, Rod, who gave us, who started this narrative, Rod, on this 6,000-year history of Earth? How did that narrative even start, that the Earth is only 6,000 years? That's the uh, creation mythos from the Nicene Council. Okay. Right? So when you get back to the origin of religion, it's only three religions in the world. We think that <clears throat> other stuff is religions, like Buddhism. Buddhism is not a religion. Hinduism is not a religion. Yeah. But they lump them in to validate the false religions. Mm -hmm. Right? So when they came up with the creed, the Nicene Creed, it was the foundational um, doctrine um, in written form. It's called the Nicene Creed, right? And a lot of people don't know those people that was in the Nicene Council look like us. Well, they ain't us. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the whole construct of the church was according to the founders of the church, which was the um, brainchild of Emperor Constantine, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. The Emperor Constantine got all of the high priests of all of the different um, spirit science teachings together, and under the threat of death, he gave them a time period to come up with what they call the um, canon of text and the doctrine of the church that would bridge all these different systems under one system, and they would call it Christianity. Mm. Mm. The Judaic religions was written after the Christian religions because didn't nobody know what they was talking about because you weren't talking about Hebrews, right? You wasn't talking about Moses and only one they was talking about was Abraham, the sons of Abraham. They keep bringing up Abraham, but don't nobody know who Abraham is. Mm -hmm. They say he was the father of many nations and they changed his name from Abram to Abraham, right? But that's uh, partially um, misleading because that's not a name. It's a it's a, a chemetic um, acronym. Ab means um, heart. Mm -hmm. Ra is the exalted father. Him, which became an addition after they changed his name. That's all they did was added the him to the end of Abram, mm. right? Mm -hmm. And it ended up being properly translated from Kemetic to English is the heart of the great black father God. 
Mm-hmm. The implication is Osiris because he's the only one that's called the Lord of the perfect black. Right. But they're not talking the terms we use today in reference to black is the color connotation of like your hat. Yeah. Right. That's not what that was back then. The shim, as it's called in the um in the Kemetic language, as you see the word Kim is the beginning of Kemet. Mm. Right? It's making a reference to something called the primordial noon, the uh the sphere of chaos, mm-hmm. the realm of the great dark mother. Mm-hmm. Right. So this is the reference, but because we modernize with an alternative religious agenda mm-hmm. to tear down the spirit sciences, because once you in your true form, you're not controllable if you don't want to be controlled. Right. 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 There are, there ain't no prisons, no bullets. None of that can control you, because when you realize the capabilities that what you have, you start finding the uh, other lost souls whose job it is to wake up so that we can all wake up. Mm -hmm. Right. So when you um, uh, finally attain the wisdom of the ages, as they call it, you don't have that fear of the devil. You don't have no fear of God because all those are constructs. Right to trap the mind into a paradigm that's controllable by external force. We are supposed to be internally controlled, not externally controlled. The external is supposed to be the enhancement that reflects the development of the internal. This is why they keep talking about manifestation and the secret and all of these things. They trying to tell you in a roundabout way that if you move and steer from the religious documents and go into the ancient spirit sciences, they call it manifestation, right? If you get enough people to comp- to consciously comprehend something and it makes sense, right? And they got the right blood, it activates DNA codons that wakes us up from the slumber. This is where we at now. People waking up so fast, it's just breakneck speed. But to the people who don't understand process, it looks like it's taking a long time. Uh No, indeed. So, all right, what the story of Noah's Ark, uh, Noah saving the animals, the flood, obviously, we know, that's not exactly what happened. So what is the truth about this story that we hear called Noah's Ark and this flood that took place, Rod? So that's a local story of Utnafishnam merged with the Emerald Tablet story of Tahuti. Okay. Let that sink in for a minute. (laughs) A local story of Utnafishnam. 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 Who what? Noah Noah is the it's the middle portion of the name. It's Utnafishta. Nuh. It's how you pronounce it in the Kemetic language. Nuh. And what it's just like uh shortening your name, calling Robert Ra. Mm. Okay, now what happened over there is the same thing they was doing over here when they was flooding our cities out. Like Katrina, we, you mean. Yeah, so they they go they about to they gonna break a dam. Mm. When they break this dam, the water is gonna fill in the valley that they in, and this Noah cat or Udna fish them. He didn't have one of every animal on Earth in the original text. He had one of every animal on his farm. Yeah. The. Uh, Mount Ararat story of the ship made out of gopher wood. <clears throat> All that is the extrapolation of the migration of Tahuti from southwestern America, as we call it now, around the Grand Canyon 
um, which he tell you about in the Emerald Tablets. And then he landed in what's today known as Kemet and then constructed the pyramids, right? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> the ships they keep talking about they found at Mount Ararat has nothing to do with the ship that Tahuti was flying because it was not a wooden vessel. Mm. So the wooden vessel, and that's the story of Utnafishnam, mm. who built a sizable raft to take two of each one of the animals on his farm so he have so he can rebuild his farm. And let's take you back to the biblical story of uh of in the um of Jacob being uh, tending to the flocks and then he's he's um selectively breeding so he can end up with the most livestock it's all these are carryovers of ancient uh texts that they don't want us to know even exist and then they create fantastic tales wrapped around a little bit of the truth yeah so this this great pyramid of Giza, um, Rod. When was it originally? Because there's there's so many different dates floating around about when it was built. When was it originally built, and how did it? Well, how did it originally look? I heard it had wings at one time. I heard all types of stories about that pyramid. Well, <clears throat> first of all, it's about the Giza pyramids is not as old as Sphinx. The Sphinx was built first. Well, that, that's what I, yeah, the Sphinx, yeah, okay, yeah, but go ahead, go ahead, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Sphinx is about 40,000 years old. 40,000. The, okay. the pyramids was built a couple thousand years after that, maybe about 8,000 years, which would roughly date them to about um, maybe 30,000 years ago. But the best judge of when they was built is the um, reverse procession from the Orion star constellation, right? When you back it up, about 10,500 years ago is when it was activated because that's when that alignment took place right before the great Vamanus Wars that end up uh, putting us in a very adverse Earth environment. Which goes back to that artificially induced ice age, which this is why they find um, around the same strata when you um, dig in in archaeology, anthropology, the you can date by the strata of Earth, which is the layers that the Earth sediment settles, and then the next layer, then the next layer. And roughly around the same time, not long after the original construction of the pyramids, we it broke out into the war. The reason the pyramids was built over there in Giza and that the Nile was rerouted was because of what was going on in the um, in the Persian Peninsula going up into what we call today the Middle East. Uh huh. What, what was going on? Oh, what, what was going on in the Middle East that they had to reroute the Nile? That sounds like some hella shit going on over there, right? Well, the Nile used to feed a lush forest that is now desert. We call it the Great Sahara. The rerouting of the Nile was an engineering project done by the temple priests of Tahuti, and they rerouted it because they needed to fill in the crater from a sizable blast some say a great meteor but it was a more like a nuclear bomb that was detonated in the west nile the mediterranean that created that crater but it wasn't no bomb like we have today even the moab bomb is minuscule in proportions to the one that left the crater Mm -hmm. Now, now, how much nuclear activity uh, are you talking about bombs? We, you know, everybody's, you know, familiar with the nuclear bomb and, 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 and World War II. How much nuclear activity we had in this pre-atomite times, uh, Rod? Well, we used to play with atoms like children play with toys in our God form before we lost 
our ability to understand how the item work going through these wars <clears throat> and this um uh, nuclear usage that we see today that's uh, that's childish to the atlanteans uh, because there's too much risk of uh what's called uh, a nuclear spill when the rods get uh, overheat and then they start to to leach the radiation out into the into the um reactor and right. then it started to go from there into the local environment there was a nuclear power plant on the west coast of africa in a concentric city they believe it was atlantis but atlantis was over here <clears throat> and um that oh, nuke they still yeah. have the remnants of that ancient reactor and it's still radioactive mm. What they're doing with CERN, Rod, is this something that we've done in the past, but on a bigger level? Because we look yeah. at CERN. Okay. Okay. CERN not supposed to be active. If anybody activating CERN right now, they're enemy to Earth. Damn. That's just flat out out the gate. They might tell you it's activated, but at the close of the age, until the final um, um, restoration of the matriarchy, None of those high science applications are allowed to be used because the last time they led to the wars, they they used the Stargate portal and they used the the, the collider type. Uh, it wasn't called a collider back then, but that's what they call CERN. It's a hedron collider where you smash atoms. You don't need that to smash atoms. But what they were doing was they was using the that um, absolute vacuum and the exploding of a single atom to open up a gateway. These gateways allow people to walk through a doorway like energy field and be from one reality in a whole different reality. CERN was once, uh, well, well, it was, was a, a collider similar to CERN where they opened a portal between the third and fourth dimensions and ignited this massive explosion and closed the portal. The side effect was the fourth dimension and the third dimension got trapped within each other. And this formed um, an infinity loop. And the only time that you have an opportunity to exit the infinity loop is at the close of the age when you align with something called a Mahurta. This is the uh, opening between third and fourth dimension. If you want to see into the fifth, you have to flip the consciousness at that point. So it will be work being done leading up to the Mahurta. And then the resolution starts coming in on the other side as the new age begins to take hold and they begin to wake all of the people up from their slumber. Mm -hmm. and that, like all this stuff I'm talking, it's going to be people making me sound like a toddler having a conversation. Damn. Yeah, I remember you Um, uh, in the beginning of this year, you set the year off. Uh, we had a viral video uh, of you talking about the Mahertha and um, ushering, ushering the, the golden age. Um, my question would be, you know, when you hear about the procession of the equinoxes and the different cycles that happen within that, my question would be, does a flood happen a great flood does a great flood usually happen before a golden age so the world is so chaotic it's so demonic rod that in order to usher in the golden age one of the best things to do is to usher in a flood get rid of all the evil because ain't no change in the system and then you can have a golden age is that is that how this happens rod or not no it, it, it don't it don't happen like that Okay. But what does happen is as the women wake up and start taking control of their physical self mm. <clears throat> and they start tuning in to the mitochondrial frequency, you have daughters of the water. We call them mermaids today, which is an exaggeration of what they were. Then you have the water, they call water sprites. Then you have um, the sisters of the air. They commonly call them sirens because of their vocal range, uh -huh. but that's all um, to 
demonize the divine feminine. Then you have the ones that's born um, a fire, the little spitfires or spot fire sprites. And these is also reflective of the um, energy that they harness. And then you have the ones that we call the earth movers. You know that we call the ones the earth movers, what they used to call earth movers back in the day. We call them the ones with the, the dunk dunk <laughs> they call earth movers. And they got these these dances. You see some of the elders, women in um, Africa and Brazil doing these dances in the public and then people posting on TikTok. That's because they do everything in the open so you can see it. But the ones who are, um, who we call earth movers shaking their rumps cause earthquakes. Then as the ones wake up, that's from the water um, energies, then they don't cause earthquakes. They cause um, massive rainstorms opening up of what's called atmospheric rivers. They also, all this is just from them becoming conscious of their God form. Before they get cons- the self-control of the God form, the chaos generates from um, the confusion of the awareness breaking through the cognitive dissonance. So the you see the forest fires and then they be like, I seen a face in the fire. Yep, you sure did. And that sister probably was somewhere mad as hell because her child got molested somewhere and you seeing her face in the fire because she is the fire sprite that's burning something up. She burning this shit down. The earth movers is causing earthquakes. We call it the sway of the matriarch where they rump shake. We got to remember the uterus is a musical instrument and it's directly tied to prime creator. That's why the only way you can get in and out of earth as a uh, living soul is you have to come through a uterus, through a womb, through the Mm -hmm. portal of life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Let me ask you, um, this might be a little off topic, but you brought up the womb. And um, it just made me think about uh, fibroids and I'm uh, thinking about the divine feminine and how many sisters suffer from fibroids um, is what, what the hell where we go um, is what, what the hell, what the hell's happening, I guess, spiritually or whatever, for so many women, feminine women on the planet, divine, the divine feminine to have this fibroid issue in the age that we are in, right? What, what's going on with that? Well, you got a series of factors. Mm. The first thing that a woman that's in tune with herself, her pH balance is going to be always perfect in the uterus, which is sickness and illness can't exist in that condition. But the fibroids is the side effect of um, birth control pills, um, other birth control methods. And it's also in the diet, they put chemicals in the foods that irritate the lining of the uterus. And the what we see in this fibroids is a lot of the women's using a reproductive capability to trap the toxins. And as they try to keep it under wraps, the fibroid gets bigger. Right. All a lot of this stuff could be cleared up with a hyperbaric chamber and Yoni magic. Mm. Yeah, I remember Bobby, Bobby Hemmings said way back in the day that it was the perms the sister was putting in their hair. And that when a person died and they did autopsy, there was crazy shit under the skull from uh, years of perming, uh, a person perming their hair. But you got to remember the first perms was called a conk, it was a mixture. Of what we call lye and mashed potatoes. The stuff they call in the perm now is uh, a laboratory concoction of chemicals you can't even pronounce. It's not the same. The the Indians was conking long before Columbus came. Damn. (laughs) Damn, yeah. He was conking that long ago, right? Yeah. That's why you got a lot of those um, 
very, very, very dark natives and their hair is wavy to straight. Right. Some of them um, would conk their hair because they looked at like this, but the rest of their clan might have hair like Chief Warhorse. Right. So they they came up with the character as a way to, if I'm going to be in this tribe, because we get born across tribes. And when this happens, we either find our way back to our tribe or we try to fit in best as possible with the tribe we in. Right. They talk about sisters wearing weaves like she can't be conscious and wear weaves and wigs. But we don't, we fail to recall that all of the ancients was where wigs came from. They got a wig museum from from Kemet. Right. The, the women over here, they used to use uh, they used to weave the silk of the uh, corn into their hair. To streak it gold. Right. We got a lot of stuff that's from the culture, from ancient culture, been villainized by us trying to wake up and remember what culture we had. Some of us come from a culture where the matriarch who has the longest hair, that's the big mom. But that's not all clans. You got other clans where the lady that give you the blanket that's the one that gives you the approval to be an adult or whatever the occasion she's giving you the blanket, but that was their big mom. Then you had the other tribes, the ones that we, the slipper tribes, they give you slippers because they blessing everywhere you walk with the act of blessing you with footwear. All them ancient practices, now we looking at stuff that we did back then we spending excessive amounts of money on shoes, but we don't know what our obsession with shoes is because we don't see it as an obsession. We see it as just, we like some nice shoes, but this is a cultural phenomenon to the Americas. This is the different types of moccasins that we used to make. Mm -hmm. And um, when the settlers came, they wore something called buckle bottoms. They had big buckle on the front top of the shoe and they had a, a, a clunky high heel. Right, right. Right, because they come over there from walking around palaces with no bathrooms. They just drop it where they at. Right. And it wasn't just the pale face doing it, but they would tell it to us like it was. Yeah, wow, wow. Hey, Rod, I'm curious. Did you see, you know, we're talking about ancient history um, today and pre-Adamite, uh, the pre-Adamite world and the world before this so-called, you know, that we hear about the 6,000 years and the world existed for only 6,000 years. And we're talking about the world before then. And uh, Terrence Howard was on Joe Rogan the other day. And, yeah, he, lit the, he, he blew a spot up with that. Oh, man. What you thought about that, man? And what what Terrence, Terrence Howard is saying, man, it, it's beautiful to see this 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 level of, of consciousness um go into the world into the millions man it's a beautiful thing to see man it, it's funny right before before you answer that about um um terrence howard right before this show i was um i was on TikTok and i was just looking up some stuff on the um you know uh, uh pre-adamite and just mad billy carson videos came up your videos came up and i was like oh shit these the brothers on my channel and i was it was just a good thing to see i'm like rod hayes billy hayes rod hayes i mean rod hayes Billy Carson, I'm like, oh, this is a good thing to see. So it's dope to see y'all brothers everywhere out there representing with the knowledge. But tell me what you what's your thoughts on what Terrence Howard was kicking on uh, Joe Rogan? It's funny you would bring Billy Carson up because the, uh, I was scrolling on my my messages. Somebody sent me in my inbox that Terrence Howard's science was confirmed by Billy Carson. Yeah, I seen that video. Yeah. <laughs> Look. He mentioned, so, Howard mentioned Billy Carson too in the video. He mentioned him too. So I know watch he this. <laughs> Remember I told you in multiple laughs, past lives, Billy Carson was my big brother who turned me on to science. You said that, yeah. You said yeah. that. What Clarence um, Howard talking about is the stuff that was a basic conversation between brothers a long time ago, but the science level is higher than most people have broke through yet. Mm. So 
you you're telling them new sci old science but it sounds new right 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 and so um billy is like when he said that they don't we don't know what race nobody was it's not that we don't know what race they was we wasn't shades of brown mm -hmm. right when we talk about pre um atomic history we we weren't shades of brown like we are now from the darkest of chocolates to the lightest of vanillas we were not those shades because our chemical composition was altered by earth being shifted from its original um, orbit of the sun wow. right when that happened that changed the biochemistry it's changed the atmosphere um structure and this one of the side effects is the magnesium in the biology was um uh, replaced with copper and iron mm. copper and magnesium together gives you a shade of green to baby blue hue whereas now with the iron being the base then now we rusting mm. instead of oxidizing and so the rust is giving us these shades of brown interacting with our melanocytes mm. Mm. but when before just like the trees our blood would look to like chlorophyll right, right 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 it don't look like chlorophyll no more because right. the the biology of the organisms that pump the blood has changed but there's key components in the blood like the plasma the plasma has never changed. That's the carrier of the cells, right? Mm -hmm. The only thing that changed was how we assimilating the metals based on the new orbit. Mm -hmm. All of this is pre-atomic history, mm -hmm. right? A lot of this you can find in the Holy Tablets, um, Amalekite York, where he's talking about pre-atomic history and the ancient application of the sciences in the construction of the matrix right so, what, what, what I, some people say we were blue black what's the deal with this whole blue black thing and because you hear a lot about this blue these blue beans okay so when we are in shades of blue as opposed to shades of brown mm -hmm. the darkest you can get is navy blue right okay and you know from the hood we know what a flip-flop paint job is on on that lack, rolling on 30s, beaming up the box. We know what that is. So in the daytime, you can clearly see that the car is blue, but as soon as that sun sets, you ain't so sure if it is it chocolate, yeah, is yeah. it navy blue, is it black? Yeah, that's fact. right. That's a good So like it's that. it's the same understanding of how we would perceive the ones that used to be blue black. Mm. That, that was, that was that was Kali Ma original pigment. Oh. She was navy blue, almost close as you get to black without being black. <laughs> yeah. Did everybody in well, not everybody, but what percentage of the population or did the majority of the population in these pre-Adamite times have elongated skulls, right? Did you know you keep, okay, keep so those are a different group. The the ones they call teros. Teros. Right. Mm -hmm. Those are the ones with the cone head. They made a whole skin on Saturday Night Live about cone heads. Yeah. Right. And Malachi was telling us in the 80s, they talking about the teros. Well, our, our memories were suppressed through conjure magic. So we don't know what he's talking about. Mm -hmm. And when he showing us the pictures he sound crazy but we all just seen a little peanut head ass nigga in the hood mm -hmm, mm -hmm. with that pointy ass top of his head that's the genetic leftovers then you had the ones like um um the other side of yakub family he was deros and denakiel i mean teros and denakiel the denakiel is that the big old what we call big head nigga mm -hmm. you got that head the water head who we call them right mm -hmm. then the irony is we call them waterhead but the condition of the child with excessive water on the head is called hydroencephalia right and and you know it by they uh 
excessively large head because the excess fluid, this is a carryover trait of that blood uh, being in the blood. Mm -hmm. Then you have the people that was tall and they had excessive hair growth. Today, this called a condition called Hertzidism. The ones that was reptilian, when they die and they come back, they don't look like a human yet. They got to go through phases of rebirths and deaths. But the intermediate is called ichthyosis is the medical condition that described the reptilian before he's all the way been born enough to uh, actualize the part of the DNA that tells you what you're supposed to look like. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, very interesting. Uh, somebody, they, they, um, they want to know about Terrence Howard so bad. Uh, uh, question everything. Send me a five dollar super chat. He said, "What about?" Listen. Terrence let's, Howard. Let's, let's just straight get to Terrence Howard is not crazy. He know what he's talking about. The only reason he just now coming out is because he had to lay eyes on the dirt being done in Hollywood. Once he's seen it, now he see the cleanup activated. He can come out and start focusing on his science. Right. But all these Terrence Howard is an ancient what you call priest warrior. Ooh. He, the, the, he, he ain't no new soul. He's an old soul. Right. Right. And, and we you can always tell because we have this thing where we can absorb characters by the written word alone. They call it reading the script in modern times. You know what was interesting that he said? Well, one of the things he said that he remembered his birth being in his mother's stomach. Me now, too. I, yeah, I, I was about to say, you said the same <laughs> shit to me. You said the same shit to me. So when he said that, I was like, yo, Ron said that same shit. So what, what, what's the deal with y'all? My first memory, I think, Rob, I think I was like four. I think I was like four, Uh, my first memory. What's the deal with y'all remember it being in your mom's stomach? That's some wild shit that a lot this, of people It's did. wild now. That was the norm. norm it used to be the, It used to be the norm for us to remember not only being in our mother's stomach, but the flash that takes place at the inception. Yeah. Right. That would open up the gateway from the spirit realm for us to come through the portal of life. We used to remember that because we came in with an open book of life that we read of a task that we had to accomplish assigned to us by prime creator. Right. Oh, damn. Yeah, man, it's yo. I, 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 I swear, I love these conversations, man. <laughs> it, it like, it, it like does, son. You know what I mean? Like, you know how a nigga watch basketball and it does, and he's excited. Like this shit right here, man. <laughs> Having these conversations, uh, some some excited shit, man. Let me ask you this. Hold on, brother Rich. Yeah. Go back to that for a minute. Yeah. Right. The number one reason <clears throat> that most of us don't remember our birth is because of the traumatic shock uh, to the optic nerve of the bright ass lights in the delivery room. Um, I, I've heard brothers say that I think in particular a brother named Illuminati Congo talks about that. So that's, that's okay. Elaborate on that. Please elaborate on that. Okay. Let's go back to something that we can use for a frame of reference so people will understand the basics to what I'm talking about. Remember men in black, when they was flashing those people to erase their memory? Shoot, shoot, shoot. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. When you first born, all of your physical senses are extra sensitive for the first like 42 to 72 hours, 48 to 72 hours. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And if the question you will be since we were taught uh, to hate ourselves at a young age, as far as our skin complexion and color, one thing, another thing that we was taught in this current cycle to be very afraid of is uh, horns. When we think about Lucifer and we think about the horns. So my question to you is what role did the horns play? We, we've covered blackness. All the teachers covered blackness and all of that stuff. But what role did the horns play where we come into this world and we see horns? We're like, hell no. Get that shit away from me. That shit is some <laughs> evil shit, right? Talk to me. That's more. indoctrination. Yeah. That's straight indoctrination. 
The horns, all the, the horns mean one with nature. Okay. That's all it mean. It mean one with nature. I, I am of the nature of the earth. That's what the horns really mean. Yeah. I think Bobby Hemmett even addressed that before. Where he was saying the horns, you got to get it out your head that the devil got horns. Yeah. Because that's, the, that's telling you that anybody that practiced the nature science is the devil. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And it's only the nature science that's going to liberate us from man's toxic science and laws. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. People. And so what about this uh, red color that they assigned to Lucifer? Why, why, why red, Rod? Why red? What is That's it set. The That's red set. is set. Set, if you look in the hieroglyphics, was a shade of red. And he was one of the ones in the era who just so happened not to be a shade of blue. Probably one of the first ones to assimilate iron as the prime element. But that's that's from set. The word Satan is set in, which is en in Kemetics is uh, Lord, Lord set, and the his stone is the the ruby, right? And they call his floor the ruby red floor. It's also uh, in the secret societies the slaughter floor of the human sacrifice and this is your red shoes and your red bottom shoes um um significance among the so-called elites they showing you out in the open the ones who walk through the ruby red floor set which ties back to the babylonian blood magic here they go they got to show you who they is but they don't got to tell you what they symbols mean Right, and I had it on mute. Right, indeed, Rod. Let me get to uh, a super chat question real quick. And by the way, somebody had um, shout out to the people sending super chats. I seen somebody ask about Rod's cash app. Let me put it on the screen. Y'all always asking about it. Uh, then I'm gonna get to this question on the screen. It's sick ape. Uh, listen, family, if you would like to, for the individual and anybody else who would like to. Let me put this on the screen first. Show support to the brother Rod Hayes. Um, you can hit the brother on Cash App, uh, Sick Ape, S I K A P E. All right, family, you can hit the brother up on uh, Cash App and show some love. We got twenty five hundred people in here. Shout out to everybody who's in the chat. I was outside early. I had to go to my son's school early, so I didn't even get a chance to promote tonight's show. So I'm glad y'all was still able to catch it. Come on, I was out all day. So I'm glad y'all here tonight. Still heavy, still deep. Um, really appreciate it. Let me um yeah, make sure you'll show this brother support though in the cash app. Dollar sign sick eight. All right. Uh, let me get to the super chat real quick. Um, hey brother Rich, I paid you twenty dollars when you had on Raul Nefa Amen, and you skipped the question. <laughs> Tonight you have Rod Hayes, another brother respect. Same question. Uh, how many vowels and what are vowels? I didn't skip your question. Something if I'm not, it's not guaranteed that I get to all questions. I appreciate the super chats, but that doesn't guarantee your question will be asked. When it's time for me to go, I got to go. So just know that. I don't want y'all to send in a donation and think automatically, you know, when I got to go, I got to go. But um, I appreciate it, brother. But we're going to get to your question tonight. Rod Hayes, how many vowels and what are vowels? It could depend on what language you speak. <clears throat> anyway, the, the, the original alphabet had no vowels. They were all consonants. And no matter what language you can trace when the vowels was added, for example, in Arabic, you can trace back to the uh, addition of what's called the, the sun letters, mm -hmm. right? Which is the, the vowels. And the vowels purpose is to make different people that speak the same language sound the same because of accent and draw and the pronunciation of words. So they uh, they created the vowel to soften up the hard speech of the um, ancient tongues, right? But if the vowel number varies depending on the language. Wow. That's interesting. Um, all right, all right, all right. Hey, Rob, what's the deal with... Um, let me get rid of this. What's the deal with um, people... 
being born with six fingers. We talking about birth. I heard that those are the descendants of the Nephilim or the giants. And that's a sign that you, you know, you come from that or whatever. How do you get born with six fingers? What And what is that connected to, Rod? Okay. So that's called a vestige um, limb. Mm -hmm. It's a throwback to a time when you had your bloodline traces back to somebody who had six complete fingers. You still have people born like that today, but because the genetic dominance of the five fingers is um, the pre prevailing genetic stock, the ones with the six fingers now periodically show up as a vestige or leftover of a past genetic stock. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot of the so-called giants had six fingers and six toes. Mm -hmm. Right. This is why you had a dozen, 12 and a baker dozen was 10. Now it's 13. Right. Mm -hmm. But all of these changes happen because things have to change. People won't people want stuff to change, but they fight change every step of the way because it's unfamiliar and it's uncomfortable because it's unfamiliar. Mm -hmm. But the same thing is, is the DNA. Men got nipples. Right. And you will hear a lot of people who's naive say, yeah, but they don't produce milk. Look up witch's milk. The mammary gland of the man is functional to produce milk, but because of his biochemistry, the faculty is turned off because it has no um, survival value for the species. Damn. But witch's milk show you that the that male or female can both lactate at birth because they are carrying the mother's chemistry into the world before they assimilate their own. Hmm. So witch's milk was a name for men's breast milk? Is that No, witch's milk is a baby is born lactating. Mm -hmm. They ca it's called witch's milk. Mm -hmm. okay. And the reason that the baby is born lactating is because the mother the baby was eavesdropping on the mother, telling her body to produce milk so she could feed the baby. And because the umbilical cord ties him to the bloodstream, the baby, male or female, don't matter. Mm -hmm. Then they get to eavesdrop on mama's conversation with herself. Damn. Wow. Ooh, what a good. And the body responds. Yeah. So, Rob, we just talked about um, the six fingers, people born with six fingers and people, you know, the average person, I, I guess, is born with five fingers now. And it just made me think about this, Rob, because sometimes they refer to Allah as arm, leg, leg, arm, head. And, you know, some people, some gangs, let me use gangs. Some gangs represent the five, the five point star. Some gangs represent the six point star. Would the... Uh, Six finger people be tied more to the six point star, and the, no has no connection. All right, I, yeah, well, I watched it. Okay, so you got to know what the five point star mean and what the six point star mean. Yes, sir. Please. The the five point star is known as the star of Venus. Five. That's the five. Yeah, it's also known as the eastern star, the star that rises in the east. Yes. Right. Then the six-point star, often called the shield of David, but it's really the seal of Solomon. Yes. But it's the representation of the perfected man. As above, so below. And when you lay the upside down triangle on top of the right side triangle, right side up triangle, it gives the appearance of a six-point star. Mm -hmm. But what it's really giving you is a one-dimensional expression of the star life. Mm. Right. Two pyramids merged together. One is carrying the low frequency up and one is carrying the high frequency down. This is sex energy and spirit energy before you awaken. The sex energy draws all things from the crown to the root. That's called the falling. Falling king. Yeah. Crown falls to your root. Right. And once your crown reaches the root, now it has to climb back up to the mountaintop 
in order to consecrate and recrown the king. And this is when your root chakra begins to um, release what's called the sacred secretion in your sacral spine yeah. so that that gold elixir can be pumped up to the four chambers of the brain. So when your pineal gland turn on, it's like shining through gold liquid instead of silver liquid. The silver key is the moon key or the lunar key. Right. which is represented by the moon. But oh. the secret behind the moon is that it's not an organic body to the solar system. And that the moon that used to give us light in a different orbit was called the Lilith moon. And this is your oh, Adam having Lilith as a wife before Eve, because Lilith represents the Lilith moon and um, the Eve represents the lunar moon that was used to usurp the women of the earth and make them have a cycle when they didn't have one before. Women used to decide, I'm going to have a baby. And if she wanted to have a girl, she didn't even go look for no man. But if she wanted a son, then she have to find a man. That lunar moon was put there to take that capability of controlling when you procreate from the women. That's one of the major purposes of putting it there, aside from it being a battleship in order to fend off any beings coming from somewhere else. Is it harder, uh, Rod, for uh, a woman to have, um, to produce a male child than a female child? I know in a lot of cultures, a woman is considered real strong or spiritual or well respected if she's able to produce a a boy child you even seen in some of the movies game of Thrones. you know you able to produce a boy child you like you popping so is it is it harder for a woman to produce that male child than a woman a woman a, f a female child if we understood the science of what the male sperm have to go to in order to fertilize the egg, every man would be looking at himself in a totally different light. Uh oh, I'm ready. Come on, talk to me about it. Okay. This. First of all, the the man produces the Y chromosome, but he produces a limited number of them in each batch of ejaculation. This limited number is immediately front confronted with a spermicide in the vagina out the gate before he go anywhere. And the spermicide is more hostile to Y chromosomes because it see it as a parasite than it is to the sperm cell with the two X chromosomes, mm -hmm. right? But that's not all. The mother, once the baby, once the egg get to the, or the sperm get to the egg, the egg also has in its membrane uh, anti-Y chromosome chemical. So to get to that point in and of itself is a catastrophic feat for a male child to be born. Then when you go and do the research, you find that 75% of all first trimester spontaneous abortions is the male child because the male is parasitic to the mother more so than the female. So now once you get to the third trimester, or nope, it's somewhere in the first trimester close to the end when the, the sexual determination of the child is told to the developing zygote by the mother's biochemistry. Her progesterone, testosterone levels shift to produce a male to a different frequency than when if it was progesterone and estrogen that she needs to produce for the female. So now we dealing with a whole nother thing because sometimes the mother changed her mind a couple of days after and now you have child born with both sexes hermaphrodite all this is chemical communication between parent and fetus and the conditions of the uh vagina is so hostile to a, a y chromosome that we wonder sometime if the man even supposed to be here. Yo, Rod, that was a hell of a breakdown, bro. I ain't never heard no shit like that. Yo, this show is classic, y'all. So let me <laughs> ask you this now. Now, based upon that, and my brother Lance in the in the, in the chat, 
said, based on what you said, the hostile in the, in, you know, is hostile. To, the environment is hostile to a wild chromosomes. Lance says, so males are miracles. Based upon Lance saying that and what you said, Rod, I want to know if the, if the environment is so hostile toward male, ch ch male, um, male children, why do males outnumber women so much in the world? Is that hostile? Who told you that lie? They they said we all double like what six to one. The the sisters say that they be like they be like it's hard to get a man. Y'all niggas out number. It's, it's hard to get a man because half of these dudes is pusillanimous. No, hold up. So you saying we don't outnumber women? You no. Say, so that's a lie. In America alone, women outnumber men like three to one. No, no. Okay, no. I, I Globally, I, no, females I I outnumber males like ten to one. You're right. I got it backwards. Okay. No, 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 no. That's my fault. I got, I got the whole, I got it flipped. I, I meant to say woman. Okay. So that supports what you're saying. Okay. No, I had it flipped. I had it flipped. All right. All right. No, so it. when you look at the conditions that the male child go, he's not a miracle. Uh -huh. It's a deliberate act. Right, right, right. For the, the male sperm to go through that kind of struggle to, um, you know, produce a child with the egg mm -hmm. you're not you're not you, if you don't be if you not don't think you built for struggle because a lot of us don't think we built for it mm -hmm. that's the proof that you built for struggle mm -hmm. you 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 can't be who you are if you didn't go through that initial struggle to get here wow that's deep man. only the most fit sperm um y chromosome sperm right with the strongest will to survive is going to make it Damn. we ejaculate nearly a billion sperm cells in each shoot <coughs> <clears throat> of that billion sperm cells only like 250 to 300 million is male mm -hmm. and so you think you one in a million you more like one in 10 trillion and then because we don't know this, we lower our value, which makes the women disgusted at us. Shit. When you lower your self-worth and your self-value, the divine feminine, all the way down to the common slut, will see you as a loser. Oh, man. Oh, you said all the way down to the common slut. God damn it. Woo. Well, you got to remember... Humans is pack animals, and the packs have hierarchies. Mm. It's just that the human hierarchy is c covered up. The natural hierarchy is covered up by the uniform commercial system, where uniforms make the legitimacy appear legitimate when it's false to hold its hand. Mm. What you are by nature is your true form, but your true form remains unknown. Mm. Mm -hmm. Indeed, indeed. Because you don't know who you are. Right. Right? You be having these dreams just trying to tell you all the time, all of us. These dreams come in, ain't nothing but um, why you in the fourth dimension, your fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth dimensional self is giving you data to take into the physical to work the solution out of this physics problem that's told in the conceptual format of arts and entertainment in the three-dimensional fixed position reality. Right. So this is confusing to the people who don't know what we go through to get here. You wouldn't even consider suicide as a male if you knew what you went through just to even survive the first trimester. Right. Then you have miscarriages starting from the third trimester going into the last stages of pregnancy and the most common miscarried child is always the male it might look like the female because there's so many more of them than us being born yeah right but when you look at it ratio wise the for the amount of females compared to the amount of males that's miscarried, it's disproportionately larger that the males are miscarried. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right? So by the time you coming out, right, 
Um, and then they have any what's called preeclampsia or early contractions mm-hmm. revving up to push you out, mm-hmm. right? Your odds of making it through birth is all about 60% compared to the uh, 80% for the female. Just making it through the canal alone. So when you start putting these numbers together, you be, you realize you're not one in a million. You one in some trillions. One in ten trillion, you said, Andy. Because you didn't because in order for you to be here, nature has to put you through the ringer so you're strong enough to carry on the task you was required to do when your mama prayed for a child to deliver her from whatever she prayed for the child for. The weakest child not going to be able to perform the function. But even the ones that think they're weak, really not as weak as they think they are. This is that the sociology and psychology has convinced them to surrender their power and fit in. <clears throat> Family, I'm going to be honest with y'all. Y'all hear tonight's show? Tonight's show, the show before tonight, Raul Nefa Amen. The show before that, I think Sharif El Bay. The show before that, I think um, the brother Kwame Sunhorse. Yo, family, yo, tell me this. I be thinking I'm bugging out when I be like, yo, I be I got some of the illest people in the world on my show. I think my show is the shit. Do y'all hear the <laughs> shit the brothers and sisters be dropping on my channel? Nah, y'all, this shit ain't normal, y'all. This show, this show tonight is classic, beyond classic. Yo, family, did y'all did y'all see the last week of shows alone? This shit ain't normal, y'all. Nah, this shit ain't normal. I this the Great to- Awakening. Um, oh man, it's some beautiful. This, this the Great Awakening. We come in teams. It's yeah. not just me. <laughs> it's 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 a lot of us, right? Like the brother B. Dale. You ever checked out one of his shows? You ever had him on here? Yeah, brother, he been on plenty of times. That's my man. Look, I, I, man, I love watching that brother so much. I got to turn from his channel so I can get my work done. Oh man, it's like that. Right, I, I got uh, certain people. I have to avoid them so that I can continue on my process and won't think that okay. Well, he got that under control. Huh. I still got to do my part. Yeah, nineteen keys. Shout out to nineteen. Yeah, all them brothers. <laughs> It's a couple more of them. Um, Yaki, the, you know, the brother you asked, Yaki Awaken. Yaki yeah. is borderline extremist, though, like Dr. Sabi. Oh, that God. comes from excessive passion to heal his people. Uh-huh. But it's, he, uh, I'll be listening to him. He, he, he's, he Everything he be saying, he know what he's talking about, but he take it to the extreme. But that's also part of how we learn. Mm. Right? If he wasn't that adamant, then a lot of the people wouldn't pay him as much attention to get the um, herbal remedies for a lot of these ailments. He know which which herbs do what, right? Um, then you got what seven Bomar, seven Bomar, yeah, yeah, old Afro chief, Mississippian boy. I think, damn, I'm supposed to have him on soon too, y'all. Damn, yeah, seven is scheduled to come on real soon, y'all. Yeah, man, this thing. Shout out, listen, shout out to Bdell, shout out to Yaki Awaken, shout out to Seven. Like I said, Rod Hayes, Kwame Sunhorse. Um, I got you, Dr. Jew Pukum. You heard of Dr. Jew Pukum, right? I'm not sure. I'm not sure about that. That's just you gotta you gotta get up on Dr. Jew Pukum. I got her coming up soon too. She's I, been out since the 80s and early 90s. She has seven circuits to the brain. A classic, classic lecture. Oh, man. wait a minute. I, I think I heard that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's been out for a while, like a long time, brother, man. Hey, look, when you next time you get ready to do a show about the you need somebody to break down the treaties and the laws that they use to usurp us, mm. you got to holler at the legendary Top Cat. Yeah, I think um, the brother just, uh, he just sent the super chat. Yeah, I, I heard people be telling, I've never sat down. Cause I never really got into the whole Moorish thing and, and and the laws and all of that. I never got into authority like that. I've always been into the metaphysics, but 
people always tell me on my channel they always tell me about legendary topic ads so i gotta i gotta yeah. check so this is bridging the <laughs> metaphysics with the law oh that's what okay right because when he what he's breaking down is the movement of the people right mm -hmm. the movement of the people the method of the movement is the laws being passed to push them from one place to another mm -hmm. once you can um piece that together from a metaphysical perspective you can read how the energy moved across the land right okay. right and then this is going to show us how to double back around reverse engineer the chaos mm -hmm. in their face straight up no chaser no cover up right just show it to them when the people become aware mm -hmm. and the more of us starting to come out with this information the more of us is becoming genetically activated to discern the right information from the misinformation mm. let me uh yeah. let, let let's touch on this because i'm gonna get to um a couple questions then we're gonna get out of here but i want to ask you this i want to ask you uh, a couple of questions before i get to shout out to suza yeah i remember suza yeah shout out to suza i say i just talked to i say yesterday i say i'll be back soon yeah so shout out to i say um, you, you, you know how to contact dr suza no no i haven't i wish I man could. that that sister gave me my first study step-by-step -step guy in her underbridge blacked out through whitewash mm, what a classic book oh man that book that's one of the best books in the world look we used to photocopy it in the joint <laughs> and pass, it's like 20 something pages yeah right that's outlining when the book come out mm. and she give you a title a description and a reference mm -hmm. title description reference all the way through there mm -hmm. everything from the can sale to the old max to it was all in there all of the whitewashing the history she's showing you mm. right yeah <laughs> so now at the time i didn't even know it was a sister Mm -hmm. And I didn't know she was as young as she is. Hmm. She a cold piece of work. Totally, a hundred percent. Yeah, hundred percent. I like when we, I like talking about the people that do the work. Oh yeah, because it sh it gives the people other people to go investigate. Yeah, like when people ask me um, about studying the Vadoon, I say, look. The best online tutor for the culture that carry the swag and the energy of Big Mama teaching her babies is Louisa Taish. Mm, mm. Right? She is the real fucking deal. I got to check out. I got to check it, out. Matter of fact, when I was trying to get this Haitian uh, conjure closed out, um, I was able to use a reference from her on about Haiti and the loose energy that was rogue over the island mm. because once she explained it now I know what need to be done to correct the problem right mm. so in come barbecue remember we come in teams mm. son of Desalines mm. Rashad Jamal Two sign return, mm -hmm. right? Arisha Stone, the bookman. The crazy part about it is verifying these people. Um, Arisha Stone in his youth got tattooed up with all of these verses and stuff all over his body, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Never knowing that this was what the bookman's name was referenced to because uh some kind of way he had something burned on him so it's a it's like the the carryover of the energy may what happened to the bookman manifest his tattoos on the Risha stone Ooh. right 
Then the sisters, it was three sisters. It was more than three sisters, but it was the main three sisters, right? Today, I, the, the head priestess is uh, return is rising Phoenix that was in Tallahassee with us, right? Because mm -hmm. they all, all of the descendants of the people, the beef is inherited. Mm -hmm. We have to close out all of the parts of the beef that's actually open conjure root work being done on the people without their knowledge, mm -hmm. right? So all of this stuff going on, remember, metaphysically, we read the energy. Right. The okay. science is not old, new. It's old as hell. It's old ancient Atlantean science. Right? <laughs> so we applying the steps. I'm steady knocking for Big Mama. I'm telling everybody where she at in the Carolinas. How do I know? Because the energy signature said all of the tribes was all hands on deck in Florida, but the car didn't come from Florida. It came from the Gullah Geechee island clan called they had big mama there that's where she was helped held at to keep the enemy from capturing her and mm -hmm. she called all tribes on deck we can see the movement when we trace the migration of our people of how they switched us out and everything but we have to know how to turn these stories into a physics formula and the math will correct the errors for you to see it correctly, mm -hmm. right? This is why you apply metaphysics to law. Mm. Because once you do that, now you can see everything that's being done and how your people supposed to move versus how the enemy told us to move and the difference in the two being moving at the same time. Indeed. So it's like identifying your your dog and a pack of other dogs, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And if you know where all your dogs at in that big ass pack, all you got to do is whistle at the right time, and they'll lead the pack, and you're y'all going about your business, right? 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 Indeed. And this is uh, syn uh, synonymous with what they call in the brotherhood sending up the call. Mm -hmm. What's the call? Fiat Lux. What's Fiat Lux? It's to uh, let there be light. What light? The great Nuir, right? The luminescence of the mind, mm -hmm. the Promethean flame, right? So when we reuse the metaphysics to cancel out the negative energies and leave the direct line and the direct path to the recovery. And we've seen that they have mirrors set up. So, so go imagine the carnival, funny mirrors, right? Mm -hmm. All of them not sending off the same reflection of the same person. And this is where the humor is at, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? So they have these mirrors set up. And so in shattering a mirror, it breaks the cohesion of the false whole. So Tupac break the mirror and say, how do you want it? Mm -hmm. Right? You can't have it both ways. Mm -hmm. You either want it to be done correctly or you want to leave it in chaos. Mm -hmm. Because if you do it wrong, you're going to call, cause catastrophe. Right? And, and all of that symbolism, the brothers speak it in the open in front of the regular people. Because we imbeciles in law. So when they discussing our affairs in our presence and we not included in the discussion, that's because it's assumed that we deaf mutes. Mm. Right? Why would they assume we deaf mutes as imbeciles in law? Right? Because mm -hmm. you've been crucified. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't be able to hear and say anything about what I'm doing to you because you're a straw man, mm -hmm. right? We got, we found you hanging in the cornfield. What's the cornfield? The carbon. Mm -hmm. The carbon of the corn is the exact same carbon of the people from the land. 
we don't need the genetically traced DNA codons. We just compare the carbon to the corn. Mm. If we compare the carbon to the corn, it's superior to the DNA test because it's only one group of people that have the same carbon signature as the corn. Mm. And those are the people who invented the corn. Because mm-hmm. remember, corn used to be a wheat. Yeah. Yeah. See? So th- when you know your culture, and they, they call the different strains of corn Indian corn. Right? But it's indigo corn because some of them was able to. F- now imagine eating a colorful corn or cob under the Lilith moon. <laughs> this is how the or this is how the corn becomes sacred to the people, right? Because they was able to leave an indelible enough impression to transfer psychic energy from one of us to another one of us, and this will send out a signature. This is what the corn festivals are about. Right, right. Now the pale face carrying on the corn festival because we working in the factories and we don't have time to carry on the corn festival. Mm-mm-mm. We running around playing cops and robbers and putting out fires as firemen and panhandling on the street. We don't have time for a corn festival. Mm-hmm. But the corn festival is a sacred festival to activate the same frequency of the people that's tied to the carbon in the corn. Indeed. Right? Indeed. And what they call them? Children of the corn. Of the corn, all right. Yeah. And who was the leader of the children of the corn? Who? Malachi. Woo. They telling us the whole time. So the hierarchy of the chiefs is not determined by blood alone. It's also determined by works and deeds. Mm-hmm. And the work that you do in the number of people that you wake up, that awakening of them, they energize you to even go further. So now you become contagious and you move up in rank because the energy you project in is allowed to correct the misguided in a larger number than anybody else. So the enemy got to take you out the way and falsely accuse you of things. Mm -hmm. and use people close to you to undermine your works. But all the time, it's too late Mm -hmm. because the next wave has come. And that's when we was talking about all of the different people out now. Different people, yeah. Yeah. You know, Brother Kalai, one of my favorites. Shout out to that. He's passionate and make it look like to the people that don't understand why he's so passionate that he has a, a, a anger issue or that he um is prejudice mm-hmm. but he not he only care about he is his people and he not looking back to see if you're going to be there because your color but because he focused on the sun blood science a lot of people will take that to mean because he talking about how it's going to affect the heavier melanated versus the less heavier melanated as mm. if we don't know it's going to be a different effect in the two. Mm. Because it's already been a different effect in how the sun affects the two. So why would it not be a difference? Indeed. As these ultraviolet le- rays increase, it's going to be a difference, but you got a remedy for every problem. Oh, yeah. Right? Worst case scenario, if the sun get too bad, you give them silver till they turn blue. Because mm. that's what's going to happen. And now in that going back to that original shade of blue, they can use the uh, sunlight like chlorophyll, Mm. the same as the plants. Wow. This is your Smurfs. These was the redhead, freckle-faced people from the Appalachian Mountains that's been there for a couple thousand years at our invitation. Man. Wow. That was part of the uh, training of the Orisha priesthood that became the Irish priesthood that became the founders of Ireland uh-huh. and Scotland, uh-huh. which was named after Scotland and Scotia. Right. Well, Ireland was actually named Orisha. 
<clears throat> it was the reign that by Twahite priests, pygmies, leprechauns, who was given the gold to protect for the daughters, Scott and Scotia, by the queen of heaven and earth. Mm -hmm. The outlaw bikers, the nomads, was once given the charter under Big Mama as horsemen. Right? And it is a nomadic force that she can call at a moment's notice to anywhere she is to give aid and support to protect the matriarch. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. the MC-13 classification. Mm -hmm. It's the master charter of the queen mother. 13 is the queen mother seal. Mm -hmm. Right. Because they rescued Scott and Scotia from the Catholic Church when they was on a murderous rampage talking about they exiling all of the snakes from Ireland. Mm -hmm. And the stake was the symbol for the priesthood because the women wore the iron band with the snake around it and the men wore the headband with the cobra on it to symbolize the rising of the wisdom. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Which traces back to the seven head cobra of India. Right, which is also talking about the seven chakras being manifest simultaneously and active. The energy is the wisdom energy of the Nagas. The Nagas energy awakens the higher consciousness using your reptilian brain or your limbic system. Mm -hmm. Right? because your consciousness first goes through your reptilian brain before it ever get to your um, mammal brain and then your new mammal brain, mm -hmm. right? So you got a new mammal brain that no other mammal have. That means that out of all of the mammals, you the newest mammal in structure. In structure, yeah, yeah. Because now you had an extra layer of brain uh, added on to your mammalian brain. Oh, yeah. Right? And where is that story from? It's the Cro Magnon man, the unusually intelligent caveman that popped up out of nowhere simultaneously with um, the Neanderthal and the Homo erectus. It was like a gaping gap. Damn. Like they just popped up out of nowhere. Right, time. but it's the same story. Yeah, yeah. And 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 speaking of that, Rod, um, the last my last question for today. I'm not gonna get. I'm not gonna be able to get to no more questions. But I gotta ask this last question. Um, in terms of pre-Adamite cultures, what was Antarctica's role in terms of these? Um, the two-part question in terms of these. Uh, in terms of the, this civilization, and I guess my follow my question after that would be: Was Africa considered the motherland in pre-Adamite times, or was this a term introduced to us during the last six thousand year period? So it's a two-part question, Rob. Right? Antarctica and Africa. I'm asking about Antarctica. And Antarctica is a flash froze city from Atlantis. Damn, flash froze. Shit. Because, look, a sizable portion of Tiamat is called the Astro Belt now, Ast Asteroid Belt, the Great uh, Ring, the Barrier of No Pass, right? And this was when Tiamat was two-thirds its size, bigger. So it was more like 76,000 miles circumference back then. This is why I keep telling people the people of Earth are in before the Earth in because the Earth didn't been through some stuff that you would almost fathom to believe that it could be possible. But the sizable portion of the Earth remains is floating around as the asteroid belt. And this is recorded in the ancient temple priest record. So when the uh, collision take place, the part of um, the planet that's Antarctica gets pushed through the atmosphere into space where the temperature 
is flash freezing everything and is creating what you call a uh, ice wall or a giant ice shelf. And this is like a, a splash that got frozen in real time. It'll give you a better understanding. When they talk about um, the structure of Antarctica, it's a it's described in um it's described in the book of Enoch, right? And it's called Tartarus. And it was the land of giants, but they wasn't giants necessarily physically, but they was giants in a field of study. Like Dr. Ben is a giant. Um, Dr. Clark is a giant. Elijah Muhammad is a giant. So when the giants are stomping, you feel the effects reverberate and the echo carries the information into the future in order to correctly translate the information. And uh, the other part of the question was about what, Brother Rich? Uh, Africa. Oh, being the motherland? Yeah, was it known as the motherland in pre adamite times, or is this this That's, look kind of call it Africa the motherland is some civil some black nationalist recovery information to bring us out of the slumber on both sides of the water. People think that because I say we not from Africa, I got a problem with Africa and Africans, but that's not the case. I'm telling everybody that just like we rising up and we went over them brothers, yeah. you got uh, uh, guys like um, um, Ibrahim, right? And uh, uh, Julius down in South America, Julius, I forgot I forgot his name, Mal, Mal, Malumbe, but you got them all over Africa. You see, they just fought that coup in the, in the Republic of the Congo. The coup, they are ca they call Americans, American soldiers participating in the coup with 50 clowns because they had to be some clowns to think that at this time it would be a good idea to try to overthrow one of those kings over there when they doing the exact same thing we doing to recover what's ours over here. Hmm. So I just tell the people that's African Hey, the Africans is claiming they shit back over there. We claiming our shit back over here. Why don't y'all go assist them in claiming they shit back and you won't be begging for reparations? Because it's not going to happen because once you get your shit back, the people who had your shit can't pay you reparations unless they get it out of your coffers. What you mean unless they get it out of your coffers? What's that? What do you mean? They owe us everything. Because everything was already ours. They hijacked what was ours and used it against us. Okay. 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 They took all of the stuff that was taught to them and used it against us. And we forgot we taught it to them. All right. I got I got one more question, Rod. I know that was supposed to be the last one, but I, I, I forgot. <laughs> you you know, I always do this. You I'm with you, brother Rich. We just topped it up. You yeah. help. Look at your hat. You help, we help. Hey, what, what 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 this means to you, Rod? This because I remember you talking about. I just told you. I mean, you help, we help. Mm. Mm. That means if you start off on your project, we gonna help you along. Excellent, excellent. We gonna do what we can to support you because you doing what you can to inform us. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And shout shout by the way, shout out to everybody who um um joined the Patreon or was on the Patreon. Rod did an amazing lecture on Patreon about the whole um you know this Kendrick Lamar Drake situation and um among so, other things that you can't talk about on YouTube. Uh, many other things that you can't talk about on YouTube. So it was a heavily uh, a conversation that would just get taken down. So we had to put that one especially on Patreon. So if you're interested in that conversation, head on over to Patreon, um, Black Magic 363. It's spelled the same way as this channel. Um, it's called They Not Like Us. You know, the same name as Kendrick's song, They Not Like Us. So 
You could check that out over on Patreon. Amazing, amazing conversation I had. But I got to end tonight's conversation. I got to ask you this, Rod, because you sent me, you sent me a clip and the shit was wild. They was talking about these beings, pre-Adamite beings, took the moon, um, I guess, <laughs> wrapped it up and flung the shit toward the earth. All types of wild shit. Then they was talking about beings living on the moon, on the base of the moon, using it as a as a ship to observe Earth. What the hell was they talking about? And I know I'm not even explaining it as, as proper as it was. I, I forgot. I just remembered it right now. But um, what the hell was they talking about? Who took the moon? And it, was this some shit and, and Lil did where he took the moon and flung it toward Earth and then decided to live on the moon? What the hell was that that you sent me, Rod? What was they talking Look, about? Remember, I keep telling you the moon wasn't always there. Yes, yes. And you also right. talk about the Lilith moon, the, the, the original moon. Right. Yeah. So they put an artificial moon up there. What's your credit card? If you're involved. And it's a battleship. It's a battleship. Remember, we, we went over that. Yes. And the moon will take off and leave if shit get thick and it's required this service is required but in the meantime it's tied to the dark knight satellite to protect a uh, a hologram through the van allen belt it's you can do you can suppress the energy easier remotely than you can if you try to do it while you in it hmm. So without without the moon and without the dark night satellite, this matrix wouldn't exist. This hologram wouldn't exist. Is that what you say? This the three D override. The three D is still be here. But what would happen is all of the things that they've used to suppress the inner divinity of the people of the planet would not work on them anymore. That's all, and they would be able to have uh, different abilities. And then they'll remember not only that they have them, but how to use them. But you had to keep the God beings subjugated using um, science and spiritual science merged. You ever, um, I don't know if I asked you this before, you ever do, you know, people talk about sun gazing. So you never do moon magic, Rod? You never um, tap into the energy of the moon? Yeah. The sisters learned how to use the moon for moon magic and um, modern yoni magic because they realized what it was for. They started learning how to harness it and to use it as the silver key, which is oracle reading. So they able to use the light of the moon and transmute that energy into information streams that they can pick up as an intuitive um download right, right that's what the the salem witch hunts was about when they caught big mama teaching the settlers um daughters yoni magic some of them had got into a euphoria and went into a dancing frenzy and it became contagious because once the mitochondrial is turned up to its highest capacity Anybody that have residue of mitochondria in them will be activated. And if you didn't do your work, you're going to be negatively activated. <clears throat> With so much of the population focused on the moon, if there are beings on the moon, do you think we can affect their well-being by moon gazing? Like, do they ever be like, you know, how like sometime when the sun's shining on us, we like, oh, shit. People put on um um sun you know well, Europeans put on sun tanning lotion like if we focus our sun energy on the moon do the do beings on the moon be like oh shit I gotta cover myself these niggas is moon gazing and, you know some wild <laughs> shit like that no because the the moon is projecting on a higher frequency uh -huh. than you can project back at it mm. Mm. And the highest frequency always trumps the lower frequencies. That's the design of the lunar rays. Oh, yeah. The women can, can transmute the energy 
And the men can learn to use it if they learn how to use their intuition. Because it's that energy, they had to have some positive to go along with the negative in order for the balancing act to take place that they call the orbiting of the earth. Right. It got to be in perfect balance. This is the pulling on the tides. Right. Man, man, man. Family, tell me this ain't some interesting shit here, y'all. Wow. <laughs> all right, all right. Last question, Rod. I swear this is the last one. <laughs> um, what was your thoughts? What did when all right, we in so-called 2024 now? When 2012 came around, what how did you look at that? How did you interpret this whole 2012? And because we you started out the end, the, uh, the the golden age, talking about that. How did you interpret this all the 2012 talk when it was going down, right? They was discussing the Mayan calendar is the cause because it ended in 2012, right? The irony of it is. 1776 conjure the blood of Christmas Atticus expired June, um, July the 4th, 1976. The problem was the war 1812 gave them an extension into the year 2012 because the tribes took the, um, the dirty moors back to bloody war and they wasn't supposed to do that. We were supposed to educate ourselves out of the condition. So the dates, was telling me that the contract can be um, um, refused after the Mayan calendar goes back to its next cycle, which is the next time it come to an end, we'll be having a different conversation about something different then, Brother Rich, but it looks similar to what we're doing now. Right, right. Somebody just reminded me, uh, somebody in the chat, because they brought up uh, Terrence Howard. And I, <laughs> I forgot to ask you, one of the things Terrence Howard, not only on Joe Rogan, but one of his main talking points is him talking about nature's curves and how there's no straight lines. Now, I was taught, and a lot of us was taught about the platonic sonic solace, and those are the building blocks of life. Um, what's your thoughts on him saying all that's bullshit, they didn't take into consideration ether and other elements and that there's no such thing as straight lines, the platonic solids, whatever. Everything is curvature. What's your thoughts on him talking about that? That's correct. That's, that's, that's what, the, what they say in the nation. That's all, we're all wise, right, exact. Yeah. Right. He, the science is, okay, if you look at the platonic solids, this is impressions in the two dimensional description. Uh, but if you can turn it into a 3D image, it won't be the same. Mm. This is when they call it when well, you can do it in your brain, they call it activating your holographic memory. That's right. what Nikola Tesla did. So you examine it not from the two dimensional, which is on the paper or the one dimensional. Um, you now can examine it in 3D. Once you see it in 3D, it'll activate a frequency in the brain. All of those symbols do do that, but even like the Holy Sephirah, we look at it as a flat tree. But when you look at it as a three-dimensional projection, you begin to download more data in your understanding of how it works, and it'll carry a frequency that activate certain energies in your chromosomes. Mm, mm, mm. Indeed. Yeah, man. Listen, man, I, I, I would love to have a talk. Everybody keeps telling me to get Terrence Howard on the show. I I, I would love to have a brother. We, I talked about it in January, having a brother on the show. So I'm, if anybody knows the brother, I would absolutely love to have a brother on the show and kick it with the brother, have him and Rod on the show. So, yeah, if anybody knows Terrence, man, I would love to have a conversation and uh, talk to the brother. You know, definitely, definitely. Oh man, Rod, man, this man, shit, man, this this some powerful shit here, man. I'm this some powerful. You know, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. What do you think about? Because you talk a lot about the divine feminine energy, and sometimes we let me just use it as an example. Sometimes when we see things happening. We think it's a conspiracy theory, and it, and it may be universal synchronicity. So say you say a certain word, 
and as you say a certain word, the time on the, the time on the clock says eleven eleven. Some people will be like, "Oh shit, he said that eleven eleven. Rod is a mason. He's trying to do this, and it, it has nothing to do with that. You was just in perfect alignment with nature, and you happen to say a certain thing at a certain time, and it just aligned perfectly. It was like synchronistic or whatever. Um, there's also something where we think. A lot of things, what we say everything is a distraction. This is a distraction. This is a distraction. I'm wondering, say the same way we get it wrong sometimes with everything being a conspiracy, are we wrong sometimes when we call everything a distraction? And when I'm what I'm talking about is this situation with Diddy and Cassie and the majority of the world viewing him kicking, stomping, throwing Cassie on the floor, on the on the floor. Um, and a lot of people was disgusted by uh by that. Do you think that was a distraction or do you think that has a higher purpose to it for that to be displayed to the entire world? Listen, all things must be exposed in the coming of the new age. The age of Aquarius is the age when all of the dirty secrets that they had is going to be exposed. Wow. Um, as far as it being a distraction, uh, if it's a celebrity name on it, it's a script and it's part of a distraction that's put in our face. Mm -hmm. As to the same with the politicians, it's a distraction, it's a false narrative, and now they use using special effects and CGI, uh, CGI in order to tell false narratives to occupy the mind of the people. Well, you got to look at the motive. It's always in the um, in the courts when they're talking about who committed the crime. They're looking for means, motive, and opportunity, right? That's MMO. That's mom in the anagram flip. Mm -hmm. So the data comes in as a piece of information that ties to other information you already have. When the connection is made, you see the alignments, right? And, and that don't mean... Uh, that don't make you part of any other brotherhoods. It just make you know the, how to read the same thing that they using in order to keep the people blind to what they doing in their face behind their back. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Man, man, man. All right. Well, with that being said, man, I'm going to listen, Rod, man. I want to thank you once again for coming on the platform, man. I want everybody to make sure you're going to support the brother Rod Hayes. Uh, let me, you know, the brother, what's your um your Instagram? Because I know you're on Instagram and Facebook. My Instagram is the sick eight T H E S I K A P E to help everyone, soldiers and Columinati are present everywhere. Oh, that, that's what this that is said. what it sounds like when we ride on our enemies. You're on your Amaru shit. You're on your Amaru yeah. shit. That's uh, that Nagus, the Nagus energy. That's what that Look, is? The, the Tupac Amaru, the mm. monkey watch the serpent. Mm. Monkey see snake, monkey don't never forget where snake be. Mm -hmm. Right? Snake be in the bushes, monkey know where snake at because he's seen the snake. Mm. The symbolism is the snake is the serpent wisdom. Mm-hmm. The Legba is doing a war dance to inform the Ogun what has to be done if you want to correct the problem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? So the whole science is playing out in the public domain in everybody's face of the redemption process to recover everything back that belonged to the earthborn. Mm -hmm. Right? But they don't know what they're looking at. So to them, they're just being entertained. But the rest of us that know that something is being said because something got our attention, mm. right? When certain stuff get our, get our attention in a certain way, it tells us to keep following that information that's going somewhere. Mm. But the regular person is being entertained, but you following cold flips. Mm. Mm. And this is how a person can say, I guarantee you I sparked the brain to change the world. Mm. Because all I got to do is put in my work, right? 
expose the boy king to what it seems like perilous danger, and you're going to make the great defender rise up to his aid. Mm-hmm. Right? Played out in the movie Black Panther when um, T'Challa fell over into the water and Mbike picked him up. He mm-hmm. got him in there with him. Mm-hmm. The whole time, they thinking he did. Mm-hmm. Right? And then when do they find out his mama and his sister come looking for aid and assistance from the king of the gorillas? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They trying to save the um, family from the tyranny of the one from the culture that don't understand the culture that's going to end up ruining everything. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right? So it play out in Hollywood so they can say, see, I told them, but they thought it was a joke. Right, right, right. Yeah. Right? And then it's the same with reading news broadcasts as well. Yeah. The channel that you get the story from is the code. In Detroit, anything come on Eyewitness 7, I can flip codes out of if I turn on that channel. Shit. Man. I avoid TV at all costs. Yo, you do. You avoid, yeah, yeah, you don't, you don't, you don't mess with the TV, huh? The only thing I watch is wrestling because I get flips out of it because I got a passion for it so I can read the energy in order to tell me what's going on in real life. Damn. From wrestling. Yeah. I can talk through the flips, right? Like I might get a code to say a backflip, right? In wrestling, it's a, um, it's a hip toss. Mm. right or a mm. suplex mm. right so when i use that i can tie it in to the flip code to see who flipped the code that i'm catching where they flip it from and what is the code telling me that's some hell of a code breaking there Rob. yeah it's, <laughs> it's it's everything is wired with a signature from nature no matter how much man try to take nature out of his production as long as it's produced by man it's going to be infused with an energy signature derived from nature right so if the oracle reader can read the oracle he can see no matter what they do the nature's energy attached to the function that the man put out Hmm. whatever he did whether he built a building or whether he built a dam or whether he blew some shit up it's going to leave an energy signature. Mm-hmm. You don't look to the past to uh, to relive it. You look to it to avoid what you didn't like. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, there ain't no purpose of looking back. Mm-hmm. You got to see what you look back and say, okay, I tried that. It didn't work. Throw that away. I tried this. It worked real well. Put this at the top of the list. Mm-hmm. Until you evaluate a history where you can read the energy that tells you a message that strips off all of the entropy mm-hmm. that gets you right back to where the message came from in order to solve the problem. Indeed, indeed. Man, with that being said, man, I want to thank everybody for tuning in. We got almost, we still got almost 3,000 people in the chat. I want to thank everybody for tuning in tonight for this classic show. Yo, there's so many parts of the show, y'all, that I could cut up and put on Instagram and TikTok, like we went through so many things tonight y'all so if you came in late i know some of y'all came in late i want y'all to rewind the show start from the beginning because it rod was on fire the whole night y'all for two hours straight so rod i want to thank you once again my brother uh you enjoy your night my brother and i will definitely see you back on here soon man appreciate it man as i you appreciate know. you brother rich you know i always enjoy coming over here chop it up with you Indeed. Shout out to the family. Family, I will be back. If not tomorrow, I'll be back Wednesday, but I will see y'all soon. With that being said, have a good night, family. See y'all. Peace.